Get started. My name's uh, David Hillman Curtis. I run my company, Hillman Curtis. I'm going to just breeze through this stuff. I think you know a lot of this. Um, I started probably <coughs> 10 years ago uh, doing mostly flash. Moved to site design, written a few books in between, and now moving into films full time. I was doing huge site design, like I, I did a good example. When I did the Met Opera around here, I did uh, Yahoo, their homepage. And the reason I, I sort of have moved into film, it's, so it's a story of what happened one day at Yahoo. I, I, doing the, the homepage of Yahoo took two and a half years. And at the end, I had nothing to show. You know, I mean, it looked the same as the last one. You know? <laughs> and one day I was sitting in a meeting, and I, I um, one of the guys, one of the project managers said, Hillman, which, uh, which one of these blue shades of blue do you like better? And they're, you know, they're, they weren't that different. I said, the darker, because I think the page needs more body. And he said, well, that's funny, because 58% of our users like the light one. And I said, they were wrong. You know? <laughs> and at that point, I just sort of said, you know, maybe I'm, I might be on the wrong path here. I've been doing this for a long time. And maybe not the wrong path, but just maybe it's time to curve off a little bit. So I it took me about three or four years, and, and I downsized myself, and and now doing films almost all the time. I mean, Can actually, all the time. Can I what? Can you speak up just a little bit? Oh sure, yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah, so that's the that's the story. I want to talk about portraits today. Um, this is how I got into films. I I I, I bought a camera rather impulsively back in probably 2001, 2002, and I had nothing to shoot, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't really thought it through, I had no projects obviously, and, um, and uh, one night my wife came home and she, she had just seen a poet speak, his name, his name was C.K. Williams, and after someone said, um, Mr. Williams, how do, you, how do you deal with blocks, and he said, I fall in love with the master, and so I, I was sitting on this new camera, nothing to shoot, so I took that advice and I, I well, I rediscovered one of my heroes was this gentleman, Richard Avedon. <clears throat> and I um, just started diving back into his books because I own them all. Um, and just looking at the composition and how he blows colors out. And I really love <clears throat> what he does um, with very little. I think that's the hardest thing to do is, um, I mean, you have Le Annie Lebowitz, who's a great photographer, but she sets the scenes, and there's a lot of things to hide in. St still great stuff, but um, what I loved about him is just a white screen, and he, and, these, and he pops these guys out. And I was talking to a friend about his work, and, and he said, you know, I bet you could put, you could, you could stand next to, if he's still alive, Avedon, and Avedon could be right here, and you could be shooting the exact same thing, and someone could say, one, two, three, shoot. And somehow he'd get the image where the life spirit shows through. Um, but yeah, yeah, just wonderful stuff. And not afraid to, to lose definition, you know, to, to the composition. Do you know what I mean? Like the shirt's blown out, so the face pops. So I started shooting portraits. They're moving portraits. They're not anything revolutionary. I mean, Andy Warhol was doing these things back in 64, 65, but different. Because the interesting thing about the Andy Warhol, uh, he called them screen tests, but the, th the funny thing is, is that I read about these. Everyone cries in them. Like he'd, he'd set them in front of the camera and he'd walk away. And like three, three minutes later, he'd still be filming and the person would be crying. And I just thought that's probably proof that he was really evil, an <laughs> evil guy, you know? Because <laughs> like they were scared and they, you know. Um, those ones were, were shot, they, they were shot of um, dancers. I was actually commissioned to do that. And uh, they ended up being on a giant screen at the Joyce and the Guggenheim. Um, this is a quote from Chuck Close, uh, portrait artist. Um, you should never try to capture emotion, it's always there. I really like that one because when I first started, you know, I was working on composition and, and light and just getting comfortable with the camera. The hardest thing was working with the subjects. Because I'm a soft spoken, pro. I'm not like a, I'm not your classic director, you know, who says, get over there and do that. And, um, and I would try to trick them. I would try to trick my subjects. I'd roll the camera, and, you know, then I'd fool around with the buttons and say, yeah, just get comfortable. I'm just going to fool around here. And I'd secretly hit record. It doesn't work, you know. I mean, it's just either someone looks good and, and jumps out, or they don't. This next gentleman, I think, is, you know, just a beautiful face and kind eyes. 
he's got a great shaped head. You know, so I mean, it just, and others maybe don't jump out as much, and there's nothing you can do to force it. And I started to learn that. And, and the, the thing about these portraits is they became this touchstone uh, for all of my film work. Um, and I collect portraits. These two, this, this gentleman and this gentleman, I found the same day in the New York Times. <clears throat> this is an Italian jeweler, uh, and I just love the way he's see seated there in front of his display and the pride that he has. I think the photographer really nailed it. The composition's really great. This is an artist. He's in front of, obviously, he's in front of his uh, work as well. I, I love just how each photographer chose to, or maybe was told to, to show this person in front of this huge part of themselves, which is their work. And so I was, at the time, I was commissioned by Pentagram to do a, a spot on all of their um, partners. And so I, I traveled all, all over to their um, <coughs> studios in London and Austin and Berlin and uh, here in New York, San Francisco. <coughs> and part of the film, you know, I made sure to shoot portraits of these partners at the place where they spend most of their life. Because the one thing about Pentagram is that it truly is a culture of work. It's just all about work. They work really, really hard. That's what I learned <coughs> about Pentagram. <coughs> and this is where these people work. This is where they lived. And they're, I don't know, I, I might just be quiet for a little while and just show these. Well, I can't help it, I'm gonna talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> I tried. My, my wife said, just be quiet, let him just, I'm not sure. Uh, but no, but you know, these, basically I just, I set, this, I set the shot and I tell the person to stay as, as, as still as possible. This, and this one's interesting because this gentleman, the partner, he spoke to me a lot about retiring, so I set him off to the side. He's looking out the window, so he's sort of leaving the frame. My cinematographer was really upset about that composition. He wanted to get right into it. This guy's new, you know, you can see he's ready to roll. He's got the coffee. He's a new partner, he's two, you know, two years in there. And uh, Paula Scher, of course, looking beautiful. Um, and uh, yeah, so these, this, these became part of a bigger piece. Um, yeah, it's a newer partner as well. So moving pictures and moving portraits. Um, as I got more into film, you know, I started discovering more of the tools that I had at my disposal. Um, you know, tracking shots and jib shots and so on. And I thought, well, I've, I've got this camera, it moves, I, maybe I should try to use them. And back in, when I was doing flash, I really learned the power of motion to communicate as well as, as, as anything else, color, layout, uh, type. And so I, I, I started collecting a different series of, of uh, photographs and photographers. This is Gregory Crudson. He sets his, uh, he sets these portraits like um, a movie set. I mean, it's the, that's fake rain, and the, the, the set's lit, lit with a bunch of giant 10K lights, and they're really cool. I mean, it just it's like like any good portrait. It just asks the question, what is going on? It's sort of mysterious and spooky. Um, this is Philip Lorca de Corsia. He's a New York uh, photographer. Does a lot of fashion, but also a lot of fine art stuff. Um, He's known for, for putting lights in um, uh, fire escapes and going 100 feet away with a big camera and tricking, you know, like cap capturing people totally unaware but with this beautiful light. And so it looks like a Hollywood set, but the person has no idea and they're lost in thought. This one he set, I just thought it was kind of neat because, you know, you're, the guy's reaching for his glasses and it's just kind of cool. Um, this is obviously not a photograph, it's Edward Hopper. He's the, um, the painter. The interesting thing about him is, I read a book about him, and he, um, he said, all I ever, ever wanted to do was, was paint light on the side of a barn. And uh, his last painting before he died was just an empty room with a big splash of light on it. Um, this, uh, I, I borrow this pose for a portrait I took of Stefan Sagmeister, which I'll show you shortly. But again, it's, a, you know, it's asking you what's going on, and, and it's beautiful, and uh, uh, sort of mysterious. Sam Taylor Wood, a British um, photographer, she also does video. Um, 
I just like her composition and uh, the colors and also the concept. The, the gentleman's obviously dreaming down below. You can't really see very clearly, but there's a lot happening in his, <coughs> in his dream. And Jeff Wall, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's using the old Truffaut trick of exposing uh, the portrait process, exposing the tools. Interesting thing here, it looks like he's shooting in a mirror. He isn't, he, he actually has a camera on the other side of this table. Um, but I sort of borrowed that for this portrait on um, the conceptual art, or the, uh, yeah, conceptual artist, Lawrence Wiener. And I, I, I've sort of, I sort of was playing for a long time with this idea of having people take portraits of the portrait artist, or the portrait subject, while I'm doing the portrait. I kind of wanted to surround this guy with women because he just looks like that kind of guy. <laughs> so I did. Um, it doesn't hurt that he's got this amazing face. This is the one on Stefan. Again, the photograph within a picture or, port or portrait. I shot this one from several different angles on a track. Richard Avedon has a quote where he says, my portraits are more about me than they are about the subjects. Now, it's not always true with the stuff I do, but in this particular case, I think it is. I wanted to have Stefan be invisible or dwarfed by his own work, um, maybe even by his own ambition. And I don't think that that's how he feels about it. I think that's how I feel about it. Um, that's Brian Eno and David Byrne behind him. I'm not sure why I set this one on a curved dolly. One of the choreographers I worked with said, sometimes choreography is just about watching a beautiful body move. And I think sometimes portraits are just about looking at a beautiful face or an interesting face. I do like how they're older and they're looking out the window towards something. I shoot a series for BAM um, on their performers. This one's John Tuturo. Again, I'm, I'm exposing the set. John wanted his son in the shot, and his son had just drew a little portrait of John as well. This again is David Byrne, and he's in his house. Uh, I never actually used this portrait. We're doing a, we did a full-length feature on him on his last album. It's not done yet. Uh, but I didn't use it in the film, but I like it because I told him to stay still and he doesn't even blink. I mean, it's, it's like he's just so still. Look at that. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I start with an idea and it becomes something else, uh, famous Picasso quote. Um, and I, I'm totally blanking why I put it in this presentation. No idea. I'm just gonna stare at it for a while. Just bear with it. Yeah, so I think it's just that I start with uh, I started with with portraits and you know they they've grown they started they started just being portraits and now they're moving and they've become a, a part of my I've been hired to do portraits for people and uh, they've become this thing that I do in every single film that I shoot I always shoot a portrait whether I use it or not and um, one of the things that I did get hired to do was a series for SVA on uh, their graduates. And, you know, it's just, again, it's just an extension of these portraits. When I start a painting, I usually know where I want it to go. But it's never that easy. That one idea reveals another. The combination of those ideas lead to yet another. And there's a history. The pieces of each idea are always there, a layer or two beneath. Through these layers, the painting takes me to where it needs to be, not where I wanted it to go. And the painting is always right. My name is Boyce Cummings and I'm an SBA graduate. So, the interesting thing about this process, and um, I should put embarrass Ariana here, Right there. Uh, 
because she sits next to me and works with me um, and uh, helps me write these things because what, and was actually there at that shoot as well. But the interest, I'll show you one more after this, but the interesting thing about these is, is, that, is that we go in, we meet the individual, we, shoot, we talk to him a little bit, we shoot the portrait, and then we come back, once we get the shot, because we'll shoot several different portraits, um, once we choose the shot, we'll, we'll have him come over and the two of us will sit, to, sit together with Ariana and we'll write that little dialogue. It's not the other way around. We don't write the dialogue, then set the shoot, shot. It's just we're basically getting keyed by the uh, portrait. I have always returned to photography. In the past, I'd pick up a camera for specific reasons or to document a specific moment. Now I find myself working as if the camera is an extension of myself, made up of mirrors and glass, looking both inward and out, always toward discovery. My name is Naomi White, and I'm an SCA graduate. That one's probably my favorite, but it's kind of funny because <clears throat> the subject uh, works for gray advertising, and so so I did this, and, and she she brought it back to gray, and they they, they really liked it. So <clears throat> so they hired my um, cinematographer and my whole crew, but they left me out, and they <laughs> <laughs> they did their own version. Like they, they're really good, you know. But uh, but it was just kind of like. Hey, uh, so, you know, so I, I, I know, you know, we keep these things, Tina likes to keep these things short, so I did. And um, uh, I don't really have any inspirational thing to leave you with, I, I, like follow your dreams or something, because <laughs> I certainly have a spotty history with that myself. Um, get away from Flash. Yeah, get away from Flash. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, get the hell out of Flash. I could barely put this thing together in Flash. It's in Flash, and uh, I, I totally forgot. But, um, yeah, but I, I just wanted to... So show your portraits, I, and uh, thanks for watching. It all is kind of, you know, slowed down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how you, like, what drove you to do that, and if there's any particular reason for doing that, or it's just your particular way of shooting. I, I'm, I'm a, well, I'm a functioning heroin jockey, um, <laughs> and now I'm morphing, so everything has to be slow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I got, I, you know, a lot of, yes, you're right, a lot of this stuff is slow motion. I, I, um, I got into uh, the slow motion as, as uh, just, I, I just like the way it looks. I mean, I, I, one of my favorite filmmakers is Peter Ware. He's not that popular, but he, he I mean, you don't really know him as a name, but he's, he's done all those uh, Australian films. You know, he did, uh, what is it? Yeah, Picnic at Indian Rock, and then what else? Witness. Witness, yeah. Witness, and he did Dead, Dead Poet Society. He did Last Wave. He did, this is good, he's my favorite filmmaker, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I have all the films, and he, he's got a, even like in a, in a sort of a throwaway film, like uh, Green Card. He just, a staff, oh, like Fearless. Fearless has the best sort of plane crash scene you'd ever know, He's slow motion, and he plays classical music. But it's just, it's just everything's dreamy. When you see a lot of these in context, with, of course, the last ones are a part of the complete pieces. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? We are currently conducting tests on the building spiral arm safety system. Please push me hard. Maybe tell the door alarm safety. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet inside the building. Please keep your hands or feet Probably Tina cued that for me to like stop answering. <laughs> no, when you're making no sense, go to the next question. <laughs> that's, a, that's the that's the answer. I just I like that dreamy stuff. Yeah. Any other questions? Or? Yep. Um, you mentioned when you wanted to move out of web into film, you downsized yourself. I'm yeah. just kind of curious what you meant by that. Well, I you know I had when I was doing more of the web stuff, I had a staff, mm -hmm. and I don't. Now. Okay. And I, I, I share an office, and I, I uh, um, yeah, that was it. I just sort of, you know, got, slowly got out of it. And it was hard because, you know, the I was making good money, 
in, in web, I was doing you know, big jobs the last years. And so now I don't make that much money. But uh, you know, it's, I, I do enjoy the films much more. Yes? Do you have aspirations toward sort of feature length? I mean, you said you did a piece on yeah. did it burn, but narrative, or is it always a document? Well, I, I did do a narrative series as well um, that I think some of them are really good. They're short. They're, they're really short. They're, and I was thinking about the feature thing because the, the David Byrne thing, I, I guess, you know, you have the finish line jitters because we're getting close to being finished. And of course, you know, I'm acting really irrational and getting mad at people and stuff, you know, and, and <laughs> writing stupid emails. And, and I, I thought about it the other night and I thought the feature thing could be, is really good. I, I like doing this film, but I also thought, God, you know, I, I naturally just love the short form. And I don't know if I, sometimes I just feel like sometimes your ambition or, or what you think you should be doing, like I think that I should, the next step I should be doing feature. That's what I feel like, but I don't know if that's right, you know, I mean, I don't know because I love doing, I, I love the immediacy of doing the short stuff. So, yeah. yes. How about music videos? No, I'll never do music. <laughs> I did two. I did one for Girls Against Boys, which was fun. And then I did one for a band called Super Chunk. I think they're, it was, I totally blew it. It's like, it was a total nightmare. I was in the music business in my 20s. I was a, on MCA Records. So anything associated with music, even the David Byrne thing, I still have a little residual weirdness. Like, I guess it's like, it's, it's probably an area I should not spend a lot of time in. Yeah. Hey, Helmut, Mark has a question. Okay, hi, Mark. Hey, Helmut, how are you? Good. Mark, can I go back a ways? see you again. Yeah, yeah, you too. Uh, so, if we all go through phases in our career, and you certainly um, have been through a few, do you, do you miss um, design, you know, like good old-fashioned design? Because these days I would say that you're more of a video artist or a commercial director, you know, you're an image maker, but have you done does your studio still do design? Well, no, not really. I don't. Um, if, if, if we have any design work, Ariana does it. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I do miss it sometimes. I mean, I, I'm doing a bigger talk in London on a Monday, and I want to talk about, you know, how much I loved it, how much I loved design. The, you know, and I was a real grid guy, and how, how, you know, you find the movement and the rhythm in grids, and that relates to the films and how much I learned doing design. So I do miss it sometimes. Every now and then I'll, I'll sit down and, and take a, a stab at something that Ariana's working on. Or, uh, I do miss it. I love design. I mean, I, it's, not, it's not like I, I hate it. I, I love it. I just, I, I think that I got into the web design area where, you know, it was, everything was so limited. You know, the, the, the Yahoo thing's a good example. The other jobs, too, that I was doing, it's, it's just real limited. Everything was defined by research and and there's a lot at stake and it was exciting for a while but you know it wasn't why I got into design it really wasn't it was really more system design than graphic design I mean the graphic design most people I was, who I was working with you know thought of as they may not know, know it or admit it but they thought of it as sort of an afterthought the first thing was making sure the community aspect was in there you know the system was complete so Right now, I'm not missing it that much, I have to say. No. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else, sir? Yep. Yes, sir. You know, regarding when you started doing film, I mean, you obviously came from, from, from the image side, and how did you, um, when you talked about the process, how you got into that, and how did you teach yourself the, the narrative part as far as writing and as far as telling a story in the short form? Because it's quite. Yeah, well, thank you. I was a creative writing major in, in, in uh, college, yeah. but I dropped out. I was in the world, I got a record deal. We got we went to London, but I, while I was in college, I was a creative writing major. So I did playwriting and a short story writing. And so the, you know, the, the the scripts are the same as design. It's just you know you write the, you write the script and then you yank everything you can out, you know, and, and make sure that it still holds up. The scripts are really simple for most films. It's, they're two pages long. It's nice. The actors make those things happen. That's what it's all about. I get, I, my job in those, in those things is just to get out of the way as a director. Just stay out of the way and let the actors do it. The script is, if the script's good, it's, it's all. Good. Okay, yes. 
Hi. You publish your films online. Do you see any like future for that for you commercially? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it's like a, when I started the artist series, and, and you, you and I talked about some of the short films. For, uh, but when I started the artist series, I just thought, you know, I'm doing this. Uh, it's just an adjunct. It's a, it's a fun thing to do while I'm getting pounded, you know, in way in a bigger system design. And I thought I, I I'm going to keep it free, no matter what. I'm just going to give these things away because they don't cost. They cost a thousand bucks to make or something, you know. And and then sweat equity. And I just thought, why charge for them? You know, why? For, you know, it's it's it's, it's about these these guys made the time to talk to me and I'm just going to spread them around. So I toyed with the idea of having advertising or something like that on it, but I just don't want to do it. We just made a big box set, Ariana. James and Tori designed it. We just, it's not big, it's just three little discs of all, all the short films. So we are selling that, but that, not yet, but like in, in a couple days we'll, we'll have that available. It's just, it's a nice little package, but that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm not, I don't see the web stuff as being that lucrative. Even if you put an ad on it, it takes forever to make, you know, five hundred bucks. It's just not worth it. I don't think. Well, maybe I don't know enough. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm good. Okay, well, thanks so much. Thank you.